We kunnen het gewoon in het Nederlands doen, hè? Ja, met de zelf. Uh, nou ja, nee, ik zou, de, ik zou het in het Engels doen, want dan is het voor mensen die terug willen kijken. So we switch to English for the sake of the recording. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce today uh, my Tino colleague Maribeth von Egmond. And uh, she worked actually in the first author of a paper that came out of the uh, uh, big the European project, uh, Big Metalytics. Actually, we worked together with uh, Erasmus Medical Center and Achmea, the uh, health insurer. And the project was coordinated by Philips. I think we uh the project was uh terminated just a, a few weeks ago and um my bed will explain uh what we have done there and also the tno position in, in a broader perspective on uh, no drug complication floor is yours my bed yes thank you well i first uh, introduce myself uh, i'm a researcher in privacy enhancing technologies at uh, tno and i've been involved with um this big analytics use case for uh, about one or two years, I guess. Uh, and we have published an article a month ago. Uh, and uh, Vessel is also uh, our uh, co-author. And he was involved from the uh, very early start of this uh, project, it was even before I worked at TNO, I think. Um, so I will share my screen. Oh, host disabled. Participant screen sharing. It says, could you? Uh... Should be fixed now. Let's see if you can, you see my entire presentation now or only, or the PowerPoint? Only the PowerPoint, not, not yet full screen. Okay, uh, bah, bah. sorry, I'm not used to work with, uh, ah, to work with Zoom, maybe now? Yeah, perfect. Do you see my next slide also? Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so here's a screenshot of uh, our uh, article that we published in um, September this year called Privacy Preserving Dataset Combination and Lasser Regression for Healthcare Predictions. And it's basically, um, uh, technical and also a bit broader description of this big analytics use case, um, which was a research project that fell under the larger uh, uh, big analytics uh, Euro European project, uh, which was a collaboration between TNO, uh, Zilver Kruis, Erasmus MC, and uh, Zorg DTP. Um, and well, so it's not the only project that has been going on in the healthcare uh, domain, in the well, uh, privacy preserving healthcare at TNO. Uh, actually, at the moment, we have some uh, different projects starting uh, in this domain, uh, but one that you might have heard of is um, uh, the so called PPA use case um, that. Uh, that um, now um, has uh, evolved into a startup called uh, Linkside, um, where uh, test of um, uh, data sharing in the healthcare domain, uh, where they where, where the goal was to get the statistical insight into the eHealth uh, app. And this was actually a collaboration between uh, uh, CBS, Zuiderland Ziekenhuis, and uh, CZ, where um, well, these, the insights were, for example, to compute the average costs uh, that were made for a, a patient's care. Um, so it was basically about sort of counting uh, and computing some averages of the uh, columns in the data. Uh, and well, this 
um, um, uses uh, secure multi-party computation, but also uh, blockchain for auditing queries. Um, and well, the difference with this um, use case that I'm presenting here is that um, <clears throat> the research in big analytics was more about um, getting new technical, um, uh, like doing more advanced analysis uh, than than this. And this, um, what Linksight is doing, they're actually uh, uh, much further already in the practical steps that need to be taken for uh, privacy preserving analytics, such as the legal hurdles uh, that have to be taken and uh, things like, what do you do if patients don't want to uh, participate in this and have like a sort of opt out system and also technical, um, well, how, how do you technically uh, um, sort of, um, what's like the architecture of your uh, collaboration? Um, so, well, that's, that's one example. And the thing that I'm telling now, uh, Big Analytics is a bit more uh, theoretical. Um, so well, what's the problem that we are facing in this project? It's basically what we call vertically partitioned data. Uh, so that means that um, in this case, Erasmus MC and Silver Kruis have data about uh, the same group of patients. Um, in this case, I have made a very small example. Um, so Zilfer Kreis has data about patients A, B, and C, and knows uh, how many days these patients were hospitalized, in this case, 10, 0, and 5. Um, and Erasmus MC has data about patient B, C, and D, and um, uh, knows uh, about the exercise uh, how many hours a week the patient does exercise? Uh, in this case, one, six, and five. And if you see, if you look at the two data sets, you see that uh, patient B and C are um, the patients that they have in common. Um, and um, well, what can we do with this data? Well, um, what happens now is that a trusted third party, in this case, source data pay gathers data from these uh, different parties and uh, combines it, and then can, for example, compute a regression model. Um, but the, um, the um, important insight we have in this article is that uh, this um, trusted third party can be replaced with using secure multi-party computation. So that means that the parties can securely uh, compute, um, for example, a regression model uh, together. Um, and that in this, uh, when they do that, the privacy of input is guaranteed and also the correctness of the outcome is guaranteed. Uh, so a regression model, a very simple, of course, in this, uh, we use uh, more features, but in this very simple example, uh, we, can, um, uh, we can draw a line between these points that uh, have hospitalization on one side and exercising on the other side, and this is a prediction model. So in, if someone comes in uh, and um, uh, we know how many hours a week he or she exercises, we could predict uh, what, uh, how many hospitalization days uh, it gets. Um, so, well, if we don't use such a trusted third party where we put all the data together, um, how can we uh, do this uh, securely? Well, actually, there are two problems um, that we're facing. First of all, the question is, how to, do we match this data? So how do we um, know um, that patient B and C are in the same data sets without um, uh, actually having Silverkruis tell Erasmus MC, my patients are A, B, and C? Uh, and then the second question is uh, how to compute a prediction model on this matched data. Um, but the first uh, problem, uh, so how to match your data secure securely, um, we can solve using uh, the secure inner join. Um, and uh, for secure inner join, we have two, um, let's say, main ingredients that I wanted to elaborate a bit on for if you have never heard of it, it might be interesting 
to know a bit how this works. Uh, the first one is a cryptographic hash function, and the second one is um, homomorphic encryption. Um, so what is the cryptographic hash function? Uh, well, a hash function is a deterministic function that cannot be reversed. Uh, so you could compare it to a fingerprint. So uh, if someone, if you have a person, you can uh, know what its fingerprint is, but if you have a fingerprint, you don't know which person belongs to it, unless you have this person at hand and you know you already know its fingerprint. Um, so, of this, if if we if we have uh, the for the blue and the orange person, we can get the fingerprint. But if we get the blue fingerprint, we don't know who belongs to it. Um, so, well, a hash function is a deterministic function that is impossible to reverse. But I put almost because there's a sort of uh, mathematical, very tiny uh, chance that you could reverse it. But, um, and, um, well, and then the, the cryptographic, hash, uh, cryptographic hash function is a hash function that is uh, safe against uh, the so called dictionary attack. So you can Imagine that uh, in this case of fingerprints, if you have a lot of uh, people at hand, you could try all the you could try all, out all of those people, and then maybe you can find which fingerprint it is, uh, just like a, like a brute force attack. Um, but well, the cryptographic hash function makes sure that this cannot happen. Um, and then the second ingredient that we need for secure inner join is. Um, homomorphic encryption. And this is a form of encryption that enables um, to perform computations on encrypted, on encrypted data uh, without uh, decrypting it. Um, so this is a technique that we use a lot in secure multi-party computation. Um, so what happens uh, in this example again? We have these three parties, so uh, Silver Kruis and Erasmus MC uh, have this vertically partitioned data. And then there's the third party, uh, ZorgTTP, who um, in, uh, in the past would receive this data and do an analysis on this. In this uh, particular setup, uh, the ZorgTTP is a so-called helper party. So that means that it doesn't learn anything about the data, but it is needed to help um, make sure that the computation is done uh, in the correct way. Um, so what happens? The Silverkruis and Erasmus MC, they hash um, their uh, patient ID so that you see with, uh, for example, uh, A becomes HA. And they uh, encrypt, or in this case, homomorphically encrypt uh, their data. So 10 becomes some number that is not uh, that you cannot see that it's 10, and you can only decrypt it when you have the right key. Um, and after they've done, they've done this, they send this data, this encrypted and hashed data to uh, ZorgTTP, and um, then ZorgTTP can match the right columns without actually knowing what is behind it. Uh, because for example, it has, the hash of B on the left side, and it has the hash of B on the right side. Well, if you think about this fingerprint, uh, it sees the fingerprints of B on both sides, so it knows these two belong together. The same holds for the fingerprints of C and of the fingerprint of A and of D. It knows they don't match. So it can match the right um, uh, columns together, uh, rows, sorry. Can match the right rows together, uh, and it ends up with this um, encrypted uh, inner join, as we say, of uh, the data. And um, well, so this, now ZorgTP has an encrypted version of the coupled data. And uh, well, uh, one important thing is that we don't need the IDs anymore because only the uh, the the hospitalization days and the exercise coupled is uh, what we need for 
doing, for example, a regression model. Um, okay, so this was the first part of this setup. Um, maybe it's good to, there's some questions about this or don't know uh, how well you followed it. That was very clear, thank you. Uh, the SORF data page then sends the data back to the individual parties? No, so this is, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll now move on. Uh, what happens next? Um, yeah, so so just one question, Marie. So um, um, I think it was very clear. It's also clear that sometimes people say that in a vertical partition scenario, um, knowing the intersection itself may be a dangerous right thing. Right, you can figure out. Suppose our hospital starts connecting to uh, to the police. Right, then the, the police knows that the patient has cancer, but we know that the patient has a criminal record. So that information, as such, is privacy sensitive. So this. You, you probably will say this, but the, the, um, the intersection itself should never be fed back if you want to the data providers, right? Because that is information leak. Yes, yes. So the, the whole reason why we do it this way is um, because we want to keep the intersection secret. If we, don't, if we wouldn't want to keep the intersection secret, then well, we do, wouldn't have to do this whole uh, uh, exercise, let's say. Um, and uh, and also, we're sort of preparing this intersection for doing computations on this intersection, because uh, you you probably so what you could also do is only do a secure intersection, because for example you want to know how many people are uh, in both databases just because you, you only want to know there are 100 people in both databases. That's what we call a secure intersection um, uh, or hidden set intersection. You might have heard of that term. And, uh, but we, we don't only want to know that the fact that there are two people in the same data set, we also want to do a computation on the couple data. And that's what is the next step. And, and one thing follow that, up. yeah? To follow up on Andre, so so the, even the cardinality of the intersection could be sensitive, right? So yeah, like a, like a, a, a an adverse attack could just try out uh, many different intersections and, and could single out individuals. But there is some level of trust between these parties to set up this software <laughs> base. So there's probably also contracts behind that, etc. It's not an open uh, system for humans. No, yes, of course. So, so one thing that uh, should be noted here is that in the end, uh, both parties or all three parties learn the size of the intersection. And it, well, in some cases, you could argue that that is sensitive information. Um, in this case, I think it is sort of needed because you, well, if you do this, regression, trainer's regression model, you might want to know if you trained it on one person or on a thousand uh, persons. Um, there are ways, like theoretically, there are ways also to keep the intersection size hidden, but that's in this setup, we, we, we didn't do that. Um, okay, so what we have now is we have the couple data um, and it is encrypted. So the Zorg DTP has not learned anything, only the fact that there are two people in the intersection. Um, so how do we compute a prediction model? Um, well, the main ingredient that we need for that is uh, called the secret sharing. Uh, I think some of you might have heard of it. Uh, it is uh, one, so uh, I talk about this secure multi-party computation all the time, um, and uh, or MPC, and MPC is actually a, a sort of umbre umbrella term for uh, some different techniques, um, among which this um, uh, homomorphic encryption that I just mentioned, and one uh, thing that we as DMO uh, use a lot is called secret sharing. And I just wanted to give a small example that is not related to this data set, 
um, to to let to give you a, a an idea about what secret sharing can do. Uh, and this that is this example. So uh, secret sharing is always um, uh, uses this share compute reveal paradigm. So there are three phases. So we share uh, data. Well, in this case, sharing doesn't mean sharing as in I share some information with you, but it means that we, um, uh, in Dutch, I would say, hakken de hakken de waarde op in kleine stukjes. So we divide the value into small pieces. Uh, and so, in what we, the example that we see here, there are three people, and they want to compute their average salary, but they don't want to. Uh, tell each other what their salary is because this is private information. Well, they could use a trusted third party again, but they they don't want to. They don't trust anyone. Um, so how can they do it? Well, first they uh, start with sharing. So that means uh, so Alice, for example, uh, she um, sends out two random numbers. In this case, minus two and five to um, uh, Bob and Charlie, and she keeps the difference with her own value to herself. So, um, uh, so her own value too, in this case, she, she earns 2000 euros, um, minus, uh, minus two plus five is minus one. So all these values together are two, and she writes this down in her notebook, and the other people also write down these numbers in their notebook. So now Alice has shared her value of two. Um, then Bob does the same. He sends out two uh, random numbers and keeps the difference with its own value to himself. So he writes down minus nine and he sends the numbers four and eight to uh, Alice and Charlie. And note that uh, Alice and Charlie cannot know anything, don't learn anything about this value three. Um, uh, by the number that they receive. So four and eight are really random numbers too. Um, and then uh, Charlie does the same. So, uh, she sends out two random numbers and keeps the difference, which is zero to herself. Um, and what, what do what they want to do with this? So now they have shared their, uh, their secret values amongst each other. And they want to compute the sum because they want to know their average salary or well, they know, want to know their total salary and then they can divide it by three. Uh, and then all the parties agree on what they want to compute, namely the sum. And they can do this by computing uh, the sum of their own secret shares uh, of these values. So Alice computes uh, minus one plus four plus one is four. And Bob does the same with his own values and Charlie does the same with his own values. And now you see that they all have a secret share of their own, uh, of the total salary. So um, then the reveal part comes. So they decide they want to reveal the total of their salaries. Um, so they bring together these uh, sums that they have, namely four minus one and six and they can compute that the total is nine. Um, so the total is nine and the average salary is three. So the important thing to see here is that they have done the computation on their uh, secret values without actually having to share their secret values. Uh, and well, interesting thing is that multiplication is also possible here. Um, uh, not well. This is a simplified example, but there are ways that uh, use a secret sharing where you can also do um, multiplication. Um, and well, one of the, the things that uh, so this more advanced secret sharing called Shamir secret sharing um, uh, enables to also do multiplication on uh, secret values. Uh, was this clear for everyone? It was a bit of a side story, but it's just to 
um, give you an idea of uh, uh, what this secret sharing uh, does. So back to the story of um, the three parties. Uh, so we ended up with this um, uh, this this secure inner join, uh, this encrypted secure inner join. Uh, and what now happens is that Zorch Data Pay secret shares this uh, inner join database among the three parties. So in the same way as we saw in the average salary example, Zorch Data Pay um, makes sure that this, this secret database is sort of um, cut into three pieces for every party uh, so that they can do computations with this. Um, and well, why did we use homomorphic? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, the, the, I, I wasn't sure. So the, the table suggests that the uh, that the values are not encrypted, but I think they are encrypted, right? Ah, sorry. Yeah, that's a bit of a mathematical uh, uh, thing that I didn't say. Well, if we use this bracket, it it, uh, it, it means, means encrypted. encrypted. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I learned yeah. something because otherwise uh, it would be vulnerable to uh, to uh, to match with other data, right? Yeah, sure. So, so, uh, so the the database that we see here, it's it is uh, encrypted, um, but this the Zorg database has has this encrypted database, and can now uh, secret share this database among the three parties. And then there's well, this is a bit of a technical uh, detail. If you're interested, you should read our art article um, how we encrypted values to uh, secret shares. Um, uh, but well, you can think of this idea of uh, the average salary where the every value is basically cut up in three pieces so that uh, calculations can be done on it without having to uh, have insight into the data. So again, we have this share compute reveal paradigm here. So first this, uh, values are shared. And well, as Wessel mentioned, these are encrypted values so that sort of the pay has no insight in them. Uh, but um, uh, uh, due to the way the protocol is done, we end up with the, uh, these values being secret shared among the three parties. Uh, and then we are ready to do the computation on the secret data. Um, and uh, well, as I said, we can do uh, perform sums and we can perform uh, multiplication. So that basically means we can perform any calculation that we want. And in this uh, project, we uh, implemented the Glossar regression algorithm. Uh, so what happens, all the parties have, uh, for all, all data points, have these secret shares. And um, if they all perform the right computations at the right time. So they have uh, agreed on what computations they want to do. And well, in the case of Lasso regression algorithm, th there are many steps to take, but they all do it. Um, and um, well, after they have done all these computations on the secret share data, they end up with an encrypted, um, or in this case, secret shared end result, which are the coefficients of the Lasso regression algorithm. So when they are done and they decide that they want to reveal the outcome of this algorithm, uh, they can together reveal the prediction model, which is the coefficients in this case, plus, for example, some additional parameter parameters. Uh, and well, if we look at this basic example, as showed in the first place, the outcome of this protocol is then the red line. Uh, Andre? question yeah just to make sure that that i understand it so i think this requires every every party in the multi-party computation to uh, to have the patients in the same order yes so that is what that is what the whole secure inner join protocol is for okay, so, uh, so the 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 data is coupled in the right way uh, by Zorg data pay without Zorg data pay actually having insight into the data as we saw because it was encrypted and it uses this hash, this hashes to 
put the right row with the other right row. Uh, and then this entire data set is secret shared among the parties. So right. And and does it yeah. also, I think it also requires that all data providers use the same encryption, right? Because when you go back to them, you're decrypting again. Is that true or? Yes, but this is a bit of a, uh, I was thinking of, of going into this bit more technically because you also mentioned it last time, but I thought it would be a bit too complicated. Um, it is a sort of, we have used a sort of smart way of, uh, uh, or, or let's say a smart um, order of things where it happens that um, at some point everyone can decrypt its own secret shares at the right uh, point. Uh, but this is, well, this is a bit of a technical detail that maybe you could read in the article, but uh, I, I understand okay. it, 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 it works in this case, yeah. Okay. So it's not true that, so everyone uses a different, uh, so let's say if we go back to the beginning uh, and um, for example, this uh, encrypted data of Erasmus MC would somehow uh, end up at um, uh, at Silver Kruis, then Silver Kruis could do and couldn't do anything with it because it's not the same encryption. So that's important because if that would be the same encryption, it would be too dangerous that that the other party could decrypt these values. Yeah, uh, is that uh, answering your question a bit? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So well. So if we have if we reveal the result, then um, uh, all the parties together can reveal the uh, prediction model. So it's uh, the end result. Uh, so in this picture, you see that the end result of this um, of this uh, um, protocol is the prediction model. In this case, the red line. And actually, no one gets insight into these dots that were there in the previous uh, um, slide, uh, because the only way that these uh, data comes together is in an encrypted way. Um, okay, I hope that was clear despite some technical details that I left out, but I hope the idea is a bit clear uh, now. Um, well, so what were the results? So last year we ran an experiment where we used uh, uh, three machines that were actually under the control of these three parties on different locations. Um, and well, we did some performance uh, uh, tests, as you can see here in this picture. And um, well, we saw that, for example, if we have two data sets with 5,000 records each and a total of 30 features, then it would run in uh, less than an hour. So I think that was quite a good result um, because you can imagine that all these, um, uh, that all these um, computations are a lot more heavy than, than they would be normally be. Um, and another uh, thing is that um, if you do calculations in the encrypted domain, then you could face some uh, rounding errors, but we've, found that it's, this didn't give any significant um, difference in the outcome. Um, and what well, we're actually uh, uh, going uh, further with this research in the, in the follow-up project uh, called Secure eHealth, which is actually a very large um, collaboration. Uh, ITEA label um, with eight countries, uh, not all on this topic, but all on uh, related topics. And there we want to apply MPC on real data for cardiovascular diseases. And we are going to use uh, the same uh, concept. And we have a lot of uh, partners, uh, as you see here on the right. Um, yeah, and well, if, you, if you're interested, then I could also put these links in the chat. So there are a bit, there are some, uh, articles about this. Um, uh, for example, I wrote an article on the TNO page, which is a bit more uh, high level. And of course, uh, you can read our article uh, um, about this. And 
yeah, that was uh, what I wanted to say. So are there any more questions or? Thank you, Margaret. Very interesting presentation. So the, the floor is open for any additional questions. But there have been already uh, many questions. Um, so uh, uh, what, uh, one question from my side that, that puzzled me for a while is how could we actually integrate such a uh, methodology in the personal health train because the personal health train is, is about data visiting. So there is some kind of data visiting, but from my perspective, it, it, this, this, this method does not support sort of a, a generic queries, right? You have to sort of have a, a problem or you have to set up a lot of stuff to actually to be able to do this in a join, but then Perhaps once you have set it up, then sort of the uh, overall thing could be a note in, in personal health thing. Is, is, that, is that something you agree on or do you have a different idea? No, I, I agree with that. Um, I think it's, you know, the vertical partition use case that, that, that you worked on is, is, of course, extremely important. And, um, and I think you're right that if you set up the machinery, you know, you can probably uh, gener put in such a station um, quite um, quite standardly, to be honest, right? I think the the, um, the trick is going to be the overhead as, uh, as already showed you know, how much time extra time does it cost and also what attack factors are we are we closing down with this? But in general, I think such a such a system would perfectly fit in the personal health train. I mean, the train would simply come into these um, secret shares, these three parties in this case, and, and have it to, and answer its question, yes. right? Yes. I mean, that's what it would yeah. do. Yeah, but it, now so, at this point, it doesn't support uh, uh, generic uh, algorithms. Uh, it's less of a regression, right? So. Yeah, so so I have to say that, that um, I would say so any new idea that you have about, uh, so we, we implemented the loss of regression model, but yeah. let's say you say like, oh, I want to have this regression model or I want to co compute this. Uh, it's not that it's not that easy, I would say, in the sense that you can just um, make this whole system and do any computation that you want, because uh, the problem is also that um, if you would do a lot of, on the same data, you would do a lot of these kind of computations and you get all these outcomes, then you have the danger of being able to get back some information from the from all the outcomes that you have. Uh, and that's also, for example, in this uh, privacy preserving analytics PPA use case that is now Linksight, um, there, uh, the number of queries was very important because they calculate, for example, all these averages on different groups, subgroups of this data. And well, if you do that too much, then of course you end up with maybe knowing a lot about this data, which you didn't want in the first place. Right, so that but that's, finally, yeah. that, that is always the case huh? in federated learning. I mean, if yeah. even if you have a horizontal partition scenario and you're asking too mm -hmm. much and you can identify groups in the station. So I think it's a generic concern. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, yeah and I also think that, that, you know, I think your example also showed that you can, you, you can decide a little bit on what components to use. Huh? For instance, we used, uh, Johan was involved there in, um, in a CBS use case where basically CBS played this, uh, the Zorg-TTP role. Mm -hmm. And we, we considered that as a station, right? So we, we yeah. weren't too, too concerned with, with producing secret shares, uh, but we, we temporarily brought the data together at CBS under a hashed, uh, whatever, birth date and birthplace and things like that, much like you do, I think. Um, and then you run the train on that, and then you, and then you, the, the data uh, goes away again. Yeah? So um, I think that's you can also see this as you know, there's, there's, the, pick your poison if you want, right? You can, you can also pick parts of that if you don't, if you're not afraid too much about um, um, the, um, the, uh, you know, a party like data, sort data pay knowing um, the data. Then, then you're. Then you can also simply do the first step only. I think that's also an option. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you, yeah, Are there any other questions for Marie Beth? 
Yeah, maybe um, um, uh, a question yeah. on the legal side of things, uh, because you mentioned that as well. Um, so in, in a sense, um, this is still uh, data processing by a different party, right? In this case, the SORF DTP. So this should still be, although it's completely safe and anonymous as we share, there should still be a contractual agreement under um, which follows AVG, APG or GDPR. Am I correct or? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, well, I'm not a legal expert, but I know that that and also uh, there's not really consensus about this at the moment because there's techniques are so new and well, we have been talking with legal experts, but it's always hard to find the right language between technical technical and uh, legal uh, language. Uh, but what I know is that um, that this is still considered to be um, yeah for working persons gegevens. Um, uh, well, you still use personal information. You still get analysis from it, but you don't get insight into the, what the information is. So it's not the silver bullet for solving all uh, legal issues. Um, uh, and I think time has to, well, we have to find out in time what, what it would mean uh, for that, yeah. I think, I think there is the question whether or not you know, an, an encrypted data set is, is truly anonymous, right? If that is the case, then mm -hmm. yeah, anyway, but you're right, it's, it's still very much unclear. Uh, I, I think there is a comment from Johan in the, in the chat. Do you, do you want to mention it, Johan, or should I read it? Perhaps Johan cannot talk. If only one trust partner is in Turkey. So, yeah, so, yeah. So Johan is basically suggesting that perhaps the GDPR uh, would require to split the two steps as, as you have. Yeah, well, so maybe it's it, important to know that in this case, SORTTP doesn't know anything, only the, the size of the intersection because it because the intersection was encrypted. Maybe that was not too clear from the presentation because I used the mathematical brackets, but the whole idea is that the Zorgte debate doesn't learn anything. Yeah. It's only helping in, 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 in doing the computations, yeah. Jos, do you have a question or otherwise are we probably closer? Than... No, for me it's all <laughs> quite new. So I'm just uh, uh, learning uh, and it was very clear presentation. And uh, yeah, as an epidemiologist, I'm thinking, how do you build the model then? Because yeah. I'm used to having the data myself and then yes. uh, more exploring. And th this seems more like they're, yeah, a hypothesis testing and uh, maybe automatic feature selection uh, type of way of working. Uh, but uh, I was thinking about that. But of course, you could also do this in parts uh, where you first do the univariate and then multivariate analysis. But but then uh, you have to run it through a longer cycle. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you for adding this epidemiological uh, perspective. I would like to mention one, one more thing because I forgot to say, we published this code open source. So for some people, it might be interesting to, to, uh, to look into that. So I will, I will put some links in the chat for the article and also for the open source code. So yeah, well, uh, you can move on with the, yeah. I would like to conclude this uh, seminar uh, by thanking Marie Beth again, and, and we can proceed to the next part of the meeting. <laughs>